Zero Accounting Software 2023 Settings Profile and General Settings Get ready because it's time to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023 Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page we also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it here we are in our custom zero homepage. going into the new company file we started up in a prior presentation get great guitars last time we started up the company file took a brief look at the general ledger and then some navigation tools now we want to take a look at the settings that will be in place by default from zero when we start up the new company file so if we go to the icon on the upper right we have the profile settings as well as the account settings. So if you want to go into the general account settings here, your password and so on, that is here. The profile settings, if I take a brief look at that, also allows you to join the Zero community and share your knowledge with others. So you can turn on your public profile to become listed in our user directory and become part of our growing community where you can ask and give advice to like-minded Zero users. You can also help improve Zero by suggesting and voting on new features. So if you want to participate in that, you can do so. I'm going to go back up top where it says back to the Get Great Guitars, our actual company file. The other major location for the settings are going to be in the drop down up top. And then we have our settings. We took a brief look at these in the prior presentation. They're broken out into the two primary categories of general and features. This time we want to look at the general. Next time we'll probably go into the features in more detail. So the, the features overview, we've got the organization details, address, logo, and basic financial information, users, add, remove, or modify users of this organization. You've got your currencies, manage the currencies uh, your business uses, connected apps, add and manage third-party connections to zero, and subscription and billing, change plan, and update credit card details managed by yourself whoever's signed up to the to the zero let's go into a few of these in more detail so let's go to the first one organization details so up top we have include some of your information on the online invoices you send you can learn more about that here if you so choose you can choose which details below so we have the display name get great guitars we've got the legal trade name if you have a different name you can use a you could use a different name you've got the logo note that the invoice is one of those forms of course that is going to be going out to customers usually in the form of an email and therefore customizing the invoice not just for internal accounting purposes but also for external uh, purposes to make it look nice and whatnot uh, is something you might want to uh, dive into in a little bit more detail uh, so we're going to be mainly in this practice problem focusing in on the impact of the invoice form which it does have as all the forms generally do to create the financial statements balance sheet and the income statement and related reports what is your line of business and then you've got your organization type so within the organization exempt organization partnership private foundation and so on ein number so this is going to be <clears throat> a number that if you're in the united states you would get that from the irs typically it's an employer identification number in the united states and uh, you, you don't just need it if you have employees. If you're a sole proprietor, for example, this is kind of like your business's social security number, which you still might have to give out if you have to give it to like someone who needs to 1099 you. You don't want to have to give them your, your uh, social security number. You'd like to give them and you have to give them something. And therefore, even if you don't have employees, you might have an EIN number. It's fairly easy to sign up for if you're a U.S. business and you can get that, the TIN number. EIN Social Security 
organization description if you want to add the details there and then uh, the postal address. So I've populated some of this stuff here. So I just put sole proprietorship for our business. I added a general, just a, a, a number for an EIN number. I'm not gonna add an organization uh, description. And then on uh, the address, we've got our location. So I'm gonna say that we're in the, the Beverly Hills, 252 South uh, Camden Drive, Beverly Hills. And then for the physical address, I'm gonna just say it's the same as the postal address and then the telephone number. We've got the country. So I'm gonna, for me, I'm gonna put United States has a one and then five, 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 or something, five, seven, five, something like that. And then our email and our website. And then if you can add fields, if you so choose mobile, fax, DDI, Skype, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Google, and so on. Let's go ahead and save that. Now those general organization settings note could be uh, important because you might populate those on forms such as uh, invoices might need the address. If you have shipping stuff, then you're gonna, you might uh, be pulling the addresses in general from the general information. The EIN might be needed to give to people sometimes for like uh, contractors or if you're a contractor or someone else. Uh, or something like that, although you don't use that all the time. And then if you have, if you're in the United States, then the taxes for sales tax on a state level uh, might be determined in terms of your location. Oftentimes could help you to, to determine whether or not you're subject to the sales tax, which is like a usage tax in the United States on the state level instead of a federal level. All right, let's go back to the uh, settings here. Let's take a look at the users. So the users are the people, of course, using uh, the software. So when you first set up the software, you're just gonna have uh, yourself, whoever set it up generally, is gonna be uh, a user of the software. We might have then an admin uh, user, and then you can add more users. Now, the great thing about Zero is I don't believe there's a limit to uh, the users, uh, which if you look at other softwares that are online softwares like a QuickBooks, that's usually one of the bottlenecking factors, uh, the number of users that possibly could be logged in. So we could then invite another user if we so choose. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna add Jane Smith here, and then it has the options down below, give them access to. Now, obviously you're now thinking, we're thinking we've got multiple people that are going to be uh, using the Zero software to help with our, our accounting needs. And then we clearly, once we have multiple people that are working in an accounting system, we'll usually run into the idea that we wanna have some, some restrictions to what certain people can do within the accounting system. So then we have what things can they access? We have the projects here, allow this user to access projects. There may be per active user costs. Now the projects are usually something that's gonna be more specialized towards particular type of industries, possibly like a job cost type of system. So if you go into the projects, you've got how much access do they need? You have uh, limited. This limit rule is read only, but their own time entries can be added and edited. It excludes all financial information. The standard, this rule uh, suits staff who run projects, but no need to see staff and project cost information. And then the admin, this role has the same access to projects as, stand, as standard and includes staff and project cost information. So I'm gonna uncheck that one and then say, I'm not gonna use projects, let's say, uh, and I'm gonna go down here. We might touch in on how projects work, but that's not our main focus. Let's go down here to business and accounting. How much access to get do they do they need? Let's go through the different access levels here. Invoice only. This limited role suits people who create quotes and invoices or enter bills, but don't need access to bank accounts or reports. So they're they're limited on the invoicing on the sales side of things. So sales and purchases uh, only create drafts, uh, sales, quoting, and invoicing purchases purchase orders and bills, and then approve and pay sales and purchases. And then we have the bank account and balances. Uh, bank account admin can add and edit bank account details held for customer and suppliers. 
you've got your reports uh finished reports set lock dates edit settings and so on and then if i go to the standard the sales and purchases so you've got the bank account and balances reconcile and edit statement lines <clears throat> reports uh view and and uh rerun reports and then the edit edit settings manage user let's go to the advisor so sales and purchase is now checked off bank account and balances bank admin you have the capacity to check that off if you so choose and so on and then if i go to read only then we're at uh we're at sales and purchase read only all these are set to read only and then we could check these off oh, we can't check these off so let's say we're going to go to standard i'll say standard for us and say cancel add a person add a personal message and then i'm going to send invitation so you could add a personal message i'm going to go ahead and send the invite here's what it looks like on the other end so we'll go ahead and and say okay let's get access to it get great guitars would like to access their account at zero get great guitars users okay i accept the invitation and jane's like i'm in i'm in and boom hi let's get up uh let's get set up use this dashboard to get to uh get an instant overview of your business and so on and so forth so jane's ready to roll and then back on our admin in i just refreshed the screen up top and so now we've got uh jane over here we've got the three dots on this on the side which we can change uh permissions or delete jane if we so choose so pretty easy process and like i say i i, I think they say that you, there's no limit which is still kind of shocking to me because like i say that's usually one of the things that causes people problems in some other you know online softwares that's one of the things that oftentimes online softwares limit is the number of people that can have access so pretty pretty nice pretty good, cool with uh zero uh, on that front all right so let's go back into our settings again and so now we've got the currencies let's take a quick look at the currencies so uh so you can send invoices reconcile accounts and get paid in over 160 different currencies and uh, our video learn how zero updates rates automatically and calculates gains and losses and so you can get into that in more detail now currencies can be a little bit confusing when you're first kind of jumping in and thinking about how the currencies are going to be working because like if you're in a single currency like the us dollar or something like that then if all your transactions of course are in us dollars that makes things uh easier but if you're purchasing things and you're using different currencies as you're purchasing then of course you have these exchange issues so just as a general rule uh, uh the, the idea would be that your financial statements are going to be in one currency we can't have mul you're not going to generally have multiple currencies on your balance sheet and income statement you have to have one measuring set like like the metric system you know in measuring other stuff you can't have multiple rulers and then and then meters and what at the same time and you have to have one measuring system but if you want to pay someone in in other currencies that means that you're going to have this uh th these gains and losses for the currency exchanges so you can you can do that uh, and zero helps you with those kinds of transactions and deal with those basically uh, exchanges as the rates change. So generally the idea would be that you're gonna have your set currency, whatever that is, in our case, the United States dollar, and then you, you could set up adding other currencies where you might make transactions that you're gonna be paying uh, in other currencies. And then uh, you'll have to deal with the fact that if you have like an accounts receivable transaction, that you are going to be paying with a, a separate currency at the point in time that you put the accounts receivable on the books, the exchange rate will be different than the point in time that you actually pay the, the or get or receive the money from the accounts receivable in this case at some future point in time. And again, there's gonna be basically a, a currency kind of gain or loss situation between those, those two time frames. And so zero can help you to set up that system. Once you kind of get the idea of it, uh, it's not 
it's not too bad to deal with and it's quite nice that more and more the systems uh zero here is is has the access to the appropriate exchange rates and whatnot to be able to calculate these items as you do the uh different as you pay things in different currencies so we might like we ha we might do a separate whole kind of course on that an another section on that because i think people especially people outside the united states where that which i think zero uh has a a good market in is uh use the may, may use these uh currency exchanges more often so we might like dive into that in the future it's a pretty interesting topic and it can be a little confusing at first but uh so we might dive into that later but not in this practice problem so connect apps so you can add and manage third-party connections to zero so if we go into the apps this is where we can be adding apps the major apps they have here are uh simplify shift work with staff scheduling you've got the automatically sync your amazon ebay shopify this is another big uh area these days is to is to have the shopify and, and amazon stores and whatnot and then to be able to link them to the online softwares and zeros one of the big two for that process obviously zero and uh quickbooks online there's there's integrated apps to help you to manage that because oftentimes there's inventory involved and whatnot there's grouping of payments that we have to uh, group together to pull that information into the system so there's different ways to kind of deal with those online uh shops and so that's a so that's another area that i'd, I'd love to go into in more detail which we might do in another course or section but not in this one then we've got uh as an ecosystem staff picks apps and small business app for your 2022 finance the sin 7 core is the number one choice for businesses that want to manage all products okay and then the last one if i go back into my settings again is the subscription and billing and we'll get into the features in a future presentation so that takes you to your subscription and billing uh and then we go to manage subscription if we so choose and currently we're in a trial period at this point in time so we could then buy it and we'd have a different uh subscription so in a future presentations we'll i'm going to go back to the get great guitars we'll dive into the other settings on the right which are the uh features settings and then we'll dive into actually doing some data input here <laughs> 